So we're going to continue on the silicone caulking vampire skull mold this week and hopefully get it finished. So I'm down here in the shop this morning and I have completed uh, the first step, if you will, of the three-part mold that I'm going to be making. Uh, this is basically uh, some clay dams to keep the plaster um, from going from sliding off and from going places where I don't want it to go. So this dividing wall is going to divide the base and then you know this is going to sit on that little donut which is going to make up the third part of the mold. So basically the mold is going to sit right here and the base is going to get poured into here and then we'll continue the uh, dividing wall, this dividing wall that you see right here, we will continue that up and over the top and you know build up one side and then build up the other side. So hopefully this will make a little bit more sense as you see it in action. So we've got the rest of the wall constructed and kind of sealed down a little bit. And as you can see on this side, those are the supports. Bring the light over here so you can see. Um, I've got clay, just clay supporting up here, and then I have straight pins going into the silicone to kind of try and help um, stabilize that a little bit. And really all we need um, from this is to keep this wall steady while we're putting plaster on it. So uh, I've used the tip of a marker here to uh, dig out some little holes. Those are going to be our registration keys for the mold to fit together. So I'm sure almost everyone has probably mixed up plaster at some point in their life. Um, but just in case you haven't or you know had any questions about it, here's how I do it. Uh, I always start with water first and you know get some plaster and start uh, dumping it in little by little. The reason I don't dump it in all at once in one big glob is so the water has time to kind of work its way in. Alright, so that's looking looking pretty good. we got a little island of dry plaster in the middle there. I'm going to grab a popsicle stick here and start breaking this up. So for this next layer, we're going to use some burlap to reinforce the plaster for the mold. So we're going to go ahead and mix up a little bit of plaster and this bowl, this larger bowl. And we'll mix it up the same way that we've been mixing up the rest of the plaster. you want to do this in an area that you don't mind getting dirty because it's very very messy so don't do this on the kitchen table 
or on the dining room table, or your wife will be mad. Or at least I assume your wife will be mad. Not that I would know anything about that at all. So I'm just kind of soaking this in here, working it in, and you'll notice I took my ring off because I don't want it to become a permanent fixture on my hand. All right, so now that I'm good and dirty, I'm going to try to move the camera up here so you can see the mold. Okay, that's probably as good as it's going to get. All right, so we're going to take this, and I've kind of set this up there and measured it, eyeballed it, you know, to make sure that it's going to fit correctly already. So we're just going to get this up here and slap it on there and start smoothing it down. I went ahead and put another layer of plaster on the mold here. So it's probably about as thick as it's going to get uh, for this side. Now the next step is to, to peel off all this clay and put plaster on the other side and finish the other half of the shell. So this looks like it turned out pretty good. Just go along and clean up this edge. So I need to go in here and pull this clay in here out without disrupting this central wall here or the exterior this wall right here. So I've gone in and cleaned up the edge a little bit, uh, kind of flattened it out and uh, trimmed a little bit of flashing on the outside off. And now we need to create a barrier between this plaster and the plaster that we're going to put on this side so it'll actually come apart um, when we're ready for it to. And there's lots of schools of thought on how exactly to do this. Um, the way that I have found that works pretty good and uh, you know the same with anything I do on here it's the way that I figured out how to do it there's probably a different way probably better way so this is just what I do so that doesn't mean that this is the way you need to do it uh, but this is you know what I've tried and it has worked in the past so anyways um, to stop rambling the way that I create um, the dividing line is with petroleum jelly I got a brush um, and just start you know, glopping this on. And you want to go around the outside edge too, you know, in case you uh, go over the top. And of course you don't want to forget that the underside down here, there's plaster down there also, that needs to not stick. And now we're going to repeat the process on this side. So I've got some plaster mixed up here, mixed up a little bit more uh, than last time, and we're just going to start.
now we have the other side completed. And I'm just going to come in and straighten up this dividing line here, the seam. And we'll pull this up and start unwrapping it and uh, see how it turned out. Side one and side two. Let's go ahead and pull this out. <clears throat> We're gonna have to clean this shell mold up quite a bit. Okay, so here's what the mold looks like from the bottom. Uh, let me just pull it just a little bit so you can see. Uh, I packed the edges. Uh, with clay, just to make sure that we don't have any undercuts created. Uh, I cleaned up the edge around here um, where the clay was. Uh, I cleaned that up a little bit and I cut this little notch right here so that way uh, when we put this plug back in it'll always fit right back in the same spot. So the other thing I'm going to do real quick is put this piece of wire in that I've bent a little bit. Uh, I'm actually going to stick this into the thicker part of silicone. Uh, if you remember from the last video, I actually built up kind of a thicker layer of silicone right there. And this is going to be a little handle for us to pull this off uh, when the time is right. So I'm just going to go over this with a little bit more of petroleum jelly. And I've got some plaster mixed up here. And now it's time to begin uh, seaming the mold. That is cutting it apart uh, so we can get our original out so we can start casting things in it. Looks like some of our finish uh, is coming up with the silicone. And there we go. Alright, so I've got the inside cleaned out just a little bit. There's still a few little flakes in there, but I think that'll come out when I uh, go ahead and cast the plaster. So this is everything that we need to create a successful vampire skull mold. So originally I had uh, intended on putting the casting uh, in the same video as the uh, mother mold shell. But in order to do the casting process justice, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put that in the next vlog. We're going to go over that fairly briefly, uh, but I think it deserves a little bit more time uh, than is left in this vlog, if that makes any sense at all. Um, next week's vlog is going to be a little bit different. Um, again, I've been called out, challenged, uh, by the mysterious and very talented uh, DragonWick121, um, a.k.a. Eric and he has challenged me to come up with a dragon head prop uh, by July 31st, which, you know, is coming right up. Uh, this is a project that I have been, you know, kind of toying with, you know, doing something for 
for quite a long time and this is just uh, a really good kick in the pants for me to uh, go ahead and do that project. So there might be a few uh, supplementary videos next week as I kind of get that process rolling. Um, he's already begun construction and is leaps and bounds ahead of me. So far what I've got accomplished is yeah that's about all I've gotten done. I must be crazy I work uh, you know 10 12 hour days usually five days a week um, and so my spare time to actually concentrate on projects and such is relatively limited um, but this is going to be really fun and uh, um, we're already commencing the kind of back and forth banter um, so you should definitely go check out this URL this is the link to you know, the initial challenge video issued by Dragonwick and uh, we will be posting video responses to this um, thread uh, with our progress and kind of our banter and trash talking back and forth. You know, it's all in good fun, but uh, you know, hopefully keep things interesting um, because you know the uh, best uh, sculptor is going to win this thing and that is going to be decided by you, the viewers, and that's any and all viewers. I'm not really quite sure how we're going to do that, or maybe commenters leave comments and say which one they like. I really don't know what we're going to do for the actual contest when it gets to that point. Um, so if you guys have any ideas for us, um, let me know. Uh, post a comment down below. You know, we'll get something figured out. This week's subscriber shoutouts go out to HHN Survivor. Thanks for subscribing. And Sharik97, thanks for subscribing. And I'm sorry if I butchered that name. Uh, and thank you for everyone who comments. Which brings me to a comment from last week uh, from John CG14. And he is asking about the sculptures in the background over here, um, as well as if I'm going to be doing any sort of uh, sculpture, sculpting uh, tutorials or anything. Um, any of my vlogs. So this guy right here is a Walmart incense burner, which was not sculpted by me. This is a really cool box from one of my old roommates, which also was not sculpted by me, unfortunately. Um, I showed these before in the vlogs. These are skeletal uh, skull sconces, uh, and I have two different finishes on them. Those were uh, by me. And this artwork right here uh, was not by me. And this little guy right here was by me, is by me. Um, this is a stage one zombie uh, that I am sculpting. And the plan is to have three of these uh, in the various stages of zombie decomposition. So this is the first one. You know, he's still relatively all there, just looking kind of like a zombie. Um, and the next one will be more uh, decayed and zombified and so on and so forth. Uh, so this is uh, plastiline clay, uh, you know, over a armature of, uh, it's been so long since I made this, I can't remember what I used for an armature, probably newspaper and masking tape uh, or something like that. Or it might just be a solid piece of sculpting, I'm not sure. Uh, but anyhow, so uh, this one is by me, and I need to, that's another project I need to work on. But um, we, I will be going over um, sculpting in greater detail in the uh, following vlogs because uh, I have the dragon head prop that I mentioned earlier to do. So I'm actually going to approach that prop. Uh, the same way as I would a latex mask. I never know how to end these things, so I just kind of ramble off into the ether, which, uh, you know, doesn't make for very interesting watching. Uh, so, yeah.